Hi guys. All right. So I had discussed on our virtual meeting that if you can edit your notes page, it's fine to start a new document. Or if you go to file, make a copy, then you'll have all your notes from chapters one through three or one through four. And then you can add chapters five onto that. So however you want to take notes is fine. The reason for the notes is because um, like on Monday morning, we had a class, virtual class discussion over the important elements of the exposition, which is just the introduction. And once again, that includes characters, character traits, setting, mood and tone, as well as figurative language. We talked about on our virtual meeting on Monday that figurative language is important because good authors use it so that we can really picture it. We can, it's like we're there in real life. And especially th through this virtual learning, um, I love how this author writes because some of you, most of you don't have the book right in front of you. And this really, I think with me reading it out loud and all of the literary elements and pieces and figurative language that's in there, you guys can sit at home and kind of just imagine being in our narrator's shoes. And our narrator is Melody. And she, um, in chapter four, so what you just read or listened to, chapter four was kind of intense, right? So Melody goes to the doctor and the doctor isn't nice. And he, he lays out some, what he thinks are facts, right? He says, Melody's brain dead. And parents, you might as well just drop her off at this institute and cut your losses and say, see ya. And then this way, her memory, she's only five or six. I'll have to look back, but I think she's only five because she's trying to go to kindergarten. And he's like, at this point, hopefully she won't have any memories of you and it'll be just easy. And then mom freaks out. And the last thing we read was mom saying, we're going right now and signing you up for kindergarten. So that's where chapter five starts. After chapter five, so tomorrow I will upload a video of me basically reviewing everything you need to know for your quiz. And then, so I'm recording this right now on Monday. So um, today is Monday. You guys will have chapter five on Tuesday, April 14th. And then Tuesday, April 14th, I'll also upload a video of me discussing everything you need to know for the quiz and then I'll post the quiz on Wednesday April 15th and you'll have Wednesday April 15th April 16th and April 17th to complete the quiz open note quiz because there's really no way that I can see if you have your notes open or not anyway so open note quiz and it's basically just gonna be over the literary elements, the exposition. So I haven't read chapter five. When I'm reading it out loud right now, I'm reading it the, for the first time with you. So, but I believe we're starting to go up that roller coaster. So we know what's going on now. We have enough information about mom and dad and Melody, and we have enough information about her condition and how she feels frustrated that she can't speak. And she talks about words like they're magical and just everything about words. She's obsessed with words because she knows so many words. Even at the doctor's office, she knew the Spanish words, right? The Bene Buenas Noches Luna. So she's obsessed with these words. And so I think we're gonna, chapter five, I think we're gonna start climbing up that rising action but we'll talk about it after chapter five, but the test, the quiz is gonna be over just the exposition part. So I'm not gonna mention any of the rising actions, even if we do run into one during chapter five. So, so we're gonna start chapter five. Once again, no chapter titles. I know you can't really see, but the first sentence is in bold, and it seems like this is something the author keeps doing, and then the rest of the sentences are in normal print. So, the bold words say, I have been at Spalding Street Elementary School for five years. So, yep, just like I suspected, we we are now, that was a memory. The, the whole chapters one through four was a memory. Now we've jumped five years later, so, 
It says, I've been at Spalding Street Elementary School for five years. It's very ordinary, filled with kids, just like the schools I see on television shows. All right, that was the bold. Now we're into the normal print. Kids who chase each other on the playground and run down the hall to get to their desks just before the bell rings. Kids who slide on icy patches in the winter and stop in puddles in the spring. Kids who shout and push. Kids who sharpen their pencils, go to the board to do math problems and open their books to read a poem. Kids who write their answers on notebook paper and stuff their homework into backpacks. Kids who throw food at each other in the lunchroom while they sip on juice boxes. Kids who sing in the choir, learn to play the violin and take gymnastics or ballet or swimming lessons after school. Kids who shoot baskets in the gym, their conversation fills the halls as they make plans, make jokes, make friends. Kids who, for the most part, ignore kids like me. The, in quotes, special needs bus, as they call it, has a cool wheelchair lift but in the door, built in the door, and it picks me up every morning in front of my house. When we get to school, the drivers take their time and make sure all the belts and buckles are tight before they lower all of us with walkers or wheelchairs or crutches or helmets down the bus lift, one by one, to the ground. Then an aide will roll us or help us walk over to a waiting area. When the weather is bright and sunny, we sit outside the school. I like to watch the, quote, regular kids as they play Foursquare while they wait for the bell to ring. They look like they're having so much fun. They ask one another to play, but no one's ever asked any of us. Not that we could anyway, but it would be nice if somebody would say hi. I guess the Foursquare players must think we're all so backward that we don't care that we get treated like we're invisible. I was so excited when mom first enrolled me here. I thought I'd learn new things every day, but mostly it was simply something to do that took up time and got me out of the house. In second and third grades, I probably learned more from the sci-fi or discovery channels than I ever learned at school. My teachers were nice most of the time but they would have needed x-ray vision like Superman to see what was in my head. I am in a special program with other children with what they call, quote, disabilities. Our ages range from nine to 11. Our learning community, what a joke, has been together since I started school. We never seem to move up and on like other classes. We just do what we did the year before, but with a new teacher. We don't even get a new classroom each year. So the same kids I'm with now were together in second grade with a teacher named Mrs. Tracy. As third graders, we suffered through Mrs. Billups, who could have got the award for worst teacher in the world. So that's a figurative language, right? Worst teacher in the world. There are six self-contained learning communities in our wing of the building. Children with various conditions, from preschoolers to kids who ought to be in high school by now. Our classroom, room H5, might be nice for babies, but give me a break, figurative language, give me a break. It's painted yellow and pink. One wall is covered with a sun with a happy face, a huge rainbow, and dozens of flowers, also with smiley faces. The other wall is painted with happy bunnies, kittens, and puppies. Bluebirds fly all over a sky with perfect white clouds. Even the birds are smiling. I'm almost 11 years old, and if I have to look at puppies in paradise one more day, I'll think, I think I'll puke. Ashley, the youngest in our group, actually does puke quite a bit. She's nine, but she could pass for three. She has the smallest wheelchair I've ever seen. She's our fashion model. She is just plain beautiful. Movie star eyes, long curly hair, and a tiny pixel nose. She looks like a doll that you see in a box on a shelf, except she's prettier. Her mother dresses her in a perfectly matching outfit every day. If she has on a pink shirt, she wears pink slacks, pink socks, and two tiny pink bows in her hair. Even her little fingernails have been done to match. When we do what the teachers and therapists call, quote, group activities, it's hard for Ashley to participate. 
Her body is really stiff and it's tough for her to reach or grab or hold anything. Every Christmas, they make the kids in age five decorate a stupid six foot styrofoam snowman. I don't know what the children in the regular classrooms get to do, but I know it's close to holiday time when whatever teacher we have that year pulls this thing out of the closet. Mrs. Hyatt, the kindergarten teacher, loved that messed up snowman. Just three huge balls of yellowing styrofoam <clears throat> stuck together with pins and pipes. Let's decorate, children, she said in her squeaky and annoying voice. We are going to place decorations with Velcro or toothpicks or glue, whatever works, on Sydney, our H5 holiday snowman. I don't know how old the snowman was at that point, but poor Sydney could not stand up straight. It leaned like a drunk who needed the wall to hold it up. Mrs. Hyatt gave us green snowflakes. Green? We were the dumb kids, I guess. We weren't supposed to care. Brown garland, stars in purple and pink. Do you like the snowman, Ashley? Mrs. Hyatt asked her. It's almost impossible for Ashley to communicate because her body is so tight. Her, quote, talking board has just two words on it, yes and no. She turned her head slightly to the left for no. I bet she wishes she could knock the thing down. Compared to Ashley, Carl is huge. Even though he's just nine, he's got a special wheelchair that's extra wide and it takes two aides to lift him in and out of it. But he's good with his hands. He can move on his own chair and he can hold a pencil well enough to write his name and stab a snowman. Carl sticks pencils and rulers into the sto snowman's torso and pens into its head. Mrs. Hyatt used to clap her hands and say in her little squeaky voice, Good job, Carl. So very creative. Carl would just laugh. He can talk, but only in very short sentences that usually have two parts. He, is very strong. he has very strong opinions. Snowman is dumb, he'd yell. Very, very dumb. I think he hates the snowman as much as I do. One year, he pinned a diaper on the back and another on the front of the bottom third of the snowman. The teacher let him stay. Carl knows diapers. When he, pop, when he poops in his pants, which is almost every day, the whole room smells like the monkey house at the zoo. I'm gonna reread that sentence. <laughs> when he poops in his pants, which is almost every day, the whole room smells like the monkey house at the zoo. The aides are so patient with him, though. They snap on their rubber gloves, clean him up, change his clothes. He always wears sweats and sit them back in his chair. Those aides deserve medals. We're not an easy bunch. Naraya, who has Down syndrome, is 10. She loves Christmas and Easter and Valentine's Day and Earth Day. It doesn't matter. If it's a holiday, Mariah is ready to celebrate. She's wide around the middle, a little like our snowman, but, sorry, I think it's Maria, not Mariah. But Maria talks all the time. She's fun to be around, even though she insists on calling me Melly Belly. Every year when it's time to bring out the ancient snowman, Maria jumps and cheers with real excitement. I'm pretty sure she's the only kid in our class who truly likes it. It's time for Sydney the snowman, she gasps. Can I put his hat on? Please, please. Can I give him red scarf? Sydney will love my red scarf. Mrs. Hyatt and every teacher after her always let Maria take charge of the green paper cut out candy canes and the purple striped stars cut from the wrapping paper. Maria kisses each decoration before attaching it with Velcro to the snowman. She hugs Sydney each afternoon before she goes home and she cries when it's time to put Sydney away each year. Even though she has trouble figuring out complicated stuff, Maria understands people and how they feel. Why are you sad today, Melly Belly? She asked me one morning a couple of years ago. How could she have known that my goldfish had died the day before? I let her give me a big hug and I felt better. If Maria is our hugger, Gloria is our rocker. She rocks for hours in the corner under one of the dumb smiling flowers. The teachers are always trying to coax her out, but she wraps her arms around herself like she's cold and keeps on rocking. She's autistic, I think. 
She can walk perfectly well, and she talks when she has something to say. It's always worth listening to. Snowman makes me shiver, she blurted out one day when the classroom was surprisingly quiet. Then she curled up in her corner and said nothing else until it was time to go home. She's never added one decoration to our snowman, but she does uncurl and seem to relax when a teacher puts on a CD of holiday music. Willie Williams, yes, that's his real name, is 11. I'm not sure what his diagnosis is. He yodels like one of those Swiss people in a mountain climbing commercial. So he yodels like one of those Swiss people in a mountain climbing commercial. He makes other noises too. Whistles and grunts and shrieks. He's never ever quiet and never completely still. I sometimes wonder if he makes all those noises and movements in his sleep. When Cindy the snowman comes out of whatever box they keep him in during most of the year, the teacher has to keep Willie at a distance because he'll knock the wobbly thing down. Willie's not trying to be mean. It's just that his arms and legs are in constant motion. He can't help it. Mrs. Hyatt and the first teacher to witness Cindy topple over. Why don't you add this bright pink bow to our snowman? She had squeaked to Willie the first year. All arms and movement. Willie tried, but the stupid pink bow went in one direction and poor Sydney went in the other. Three separate balls rolled across the room. Willie shrieked and whistled. I think I saw him smile as well. Now, if Mrs. Hyatt had given Willie a baseball to glue to the snowman, it would have been placed more carefully. Willie loves baseball. Our first grade teacher, Mr. Gross, liked to play guessing games. Willie just burbled if the questions were about butterflies or boats, but watch out if the question was about baseball. He'd screech out the right answer before the yelps and bellows took over. Who was the first baseball player to hit 60 home runs in one season, Mr. Gross asked. Babe Ruth, then a screech. Who broke Babe Ruth's record of 714 home runs? Hank Aaron, whooping noises. And who is the all-time hit king? Mr. Gross seemed to be astonished at Willie's knowledge. Pete Rose, four, two, five, six, eek. And who holds the lifetime touchdown record? Silence, not even a squeak. Willie doesn't bother with football or snowmen. Sometimes when I look at Willie though, I get the feeling that he really wishes he could be still and silent. I watch him as he closes his eyes, frowns up his face and concentrates. For just a few minutes, he's quiet. He takes a deep breath like a swimmer coming up for air. When he opens his eyes, the noise starts all over, and then he always looks sad. Jill uses a walker because her left foot drags a little as she walks. She's thin and pale and very quiet. When Sydney comes out for the season, Jill's eyes are almost blank. It's like the light has been clicked off. She cries a lot. Mr. Gross used to put decorations in her hand and try to make it easy for her to join in the activity, but it was like helping a store mannequin. I heard an aide say she was in a car accident when she was a baby. I think that's awful. To start out okay, then lose the ability to do stuff? Freddie, who's almost 12, is the oldest in our group. He uses an electric wheelchair. He loves that thing. He tells me every chance he gets, Freddie go zoom, Freddie go zoom, he grins, pretends he's putting on a helmet, then he pushes the controller to its max position and takes off across the room. Of course, his speed control has to set has two settings, slow and slower. But to Freddy, he's at the racetrack. He zooms his electric chair around the raggedy old snowman, tossing Velcro stars and bells at it, asking, snowman go zoom zoom? Well after Willie sent it flying and Carl tried to stab it with pencils, I guess it was a fair question. Every year, Freddy adds its own, his own touches to the snowman, NASCAR and NASA decals like the ones in his chair. If you ask Freddy what date it is, he can't tell you. But if you want to know who won the Daytona 500, Freddy will know. And then there's me. I hate the stupid snowman. But I toss tinsel at it like they asked me to. It's easier than trying to explain. I have a large plexiglass tray that fastens to the arms of my chair. It serves as a food tray as well, a communication board when I was young. A communication board. When I was younger, mom p pasted dozens of words on it but I was still limited to only a handful of common nouns, verbs, and adjectives, some names, and a bunch of smiley face. There were also a few necessary phrases like, I need to go to the bathroom, please, and I'm hungry. But most people, even little kids, need to say more than that in a day, duh. I've got please and thank you, yes, no, and maybe, 
close together on the right hand side. On the left are the names of people in my family, kids in my class, and teachers. The name Sydney is not included. There's an alphabet strip at the top so I can spell out words and a row of numbers under that so I can count or say how many or talk about time. But for the majority of my life, I've had the communication tools of a little kid on my board. It's no wonder everyone thinks I'm retarded. I hate that word, by the way. Retarded? I like all the kids in room H5. I understand their situations better than anybody, but there's nobody else like me. It's like I live in a cage with no door and no key. And I have no way to tell someone how to get me out. Oh wait, I forgot about Mrs. V. All right, that was chapter five. So our quiz, which I will upload a video of me discussing what's gonna be on the quiz, and then our quiz will be over chapters one through five. Don't forget, email me with any questions. Have a good rest of your day.